Here's our next problem. It's a good one. A water trough has a shape of an inverted equilateral triangle with a height of 2 feet and length of 8 feet. A garden hose is filling it at a rate of 1 cubic foot per minute. How fast is the water rising when it is 9 inches deep? Alright, actually this is a little bit unrealistic. I think it's more like eh, maybe about 0.8 cubic feet per minute, but I thought, well, I'll just keep it simple. We'll call it one cubic foot. Uh, the reason I know that is because I measured it once. Many years ago, when I lived in Tennessee, my, my neighbor, Larry, Larry was, um, was the guy who walked around town reading the electrical meters for the electric company. And boy, they must have paid him well, because, you know, he had all these, all these toys in his yard that I couldn't begin to afford as a, as a new uh, college professor, <laughs> been paid diddly squat. And, uh, oh, Larry, man, he was the first guy on the block with a satellite dish antenna, and he had a you know, boat out in his, his driveway. Well, one day, he, Larry comes home with, a, with an above-ground pool he got from Sears. And so um, he's starting to put this thing together. And I went over there and said, Larry, how, how big is your pool? I said, I don't know. It's on the label here somewhere. So we found the label. It's, it was 4 feet high and 24 feet in diameter. So, oh, okay, thanks. So I went back. And um, I, I got a gallon jug, and I started filling with my garden hose and timed it. And um, I did it a couple of times. It's about 10 seconds for my garden hose to fill one gallon. And uh, so um, that's six gallons per, per minute, which um, is about, I think, around 0.8 cubic feet per minute. So this is a, this is a little generous. These, these people have a higher water pressure in their town. Okay. So, um, so I went back to Larry. I said, Larry, it's going to take you about, I did some calculations. I said, Larry, I think it's going to take you about 38 hours to fill that pool <laughs> with your hose. And he said, oh? I said, yeah. He said, good luck. You know, so I, uh, I don't know. I mean, at that moment, I was a neighbor from hell. But, um, but I'm sure it took quite a while to fill that pool with his garden hose. Anyway, now, back to this problem. Um, as always, I encourage you to pause the video and try it yourself. See what you can get. Well, here we go. The um, inverted equilateral triangle. I hope that's kind of clear what I'm talking about there. If, uh, if you've watched the old westerns and you know, people, the cowboys bring their horses up to a trough and the troughs kind of look like this. You know, one end is an equilateral triangle and then it expands out and uh, there's probably another equilateral triangle over here and um, kind of like that. That's the idea. And uh, the length is eight feet. That's great. Um, the water is um, how high? Okay. Well, let, let's say the water is at a depth of. And I know this says nine inches, but uh, we need the formula for the volume of the of the trough first of all, so we can take the derivative. We can't plug numbers in until after we take the derivative. So let's say the the depth is x inches x inches or x feet. Oh boy. Uh, I'll probably go with cubic feet or with feet. Anyway, x equals to the uh, depth in feet. Okay. Um, now I can go with inches and, uh, and it's going to be very big with inches. A lot of cubic inches. <laughs> so I'm going to go with cubic feet and then at the end, we, you know, nine inches is simply three fourths of a foot, and so we can um, we, we can figure this out. Okay, uh, so we need the, the area of an equilateral triangle, and and the area of the trough, uh, the volume of the trough, by the way. Well, well, volume is the cross sectional area times the length. So it's area times length. I need the area of the equilateral triangle, but I don't want it for the entire trough, which is two feet deep. I just want it for how high the water is, x feet deep. So let's don't use two, because the water is up to x, and it's rising. And so I really want to know what is x prime? What's the rate of change of x or the depth with respect to time? All right, so let me draw an equilateral triangle. Yeah, I know I made it big. Here's, think of that as the water. Oop, no, 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 no. Got that wrong. This is the, ah, uh, this side is the water. So, <laughs> okay, so imagine this equal out triangle 
here. The height is x, not two feet, but x. Okay, and um, we know this. Let me straighten that side out. This is 60 degrees, and uh, what's that? Well, that's y. <laughs> what else are we going to call it? Um, I'll call this. And this is just y is half of the base. Y is half the base. So uh, when I look at this, I see a tangent opposite over adjacent. So tangent. 60 degrees is um, opposite over adjacent, x over y. Great. And uh, which means that, uh, let's see, one half base times height. Uh, area of a triangle is one half base times a height. Well, the base is 2y, and the height is x, so the area is simply going to be x times y. Great. All right. Um, what, what do I do with that? I've got two variables. I don't like having two variables. So let's get rid of one of them, because I want this volume of the trough to be in terms of x inches or x feet in depth. All right. So... Um, Solve for y. Multiply by y, divide by tangent 60. y equals 2x over the tangent of 60 degrees. What's the tangent of 60? Uh, I know a lot of you are punching your calculator. It's getting like 1.732. Um, and if it was like tangent of 37 degrees, you'd have to go with decimals or, or just continue to write tangent 37. But tangent of 60 is an exact answer. And it's a, it's a square root of 3, x over the square root of 3. So I'm going to go with the square root of 3 in my calculations because if I go to round this off now, then my later calculations may amplify or magnify those uh, round off errors and, and create, some, uh, you know, create some larger errors in my final answer. So we'll keep it exact. All right, so the area is x times x over the square root of 3. So this is going to be x squared over the square root of 3. And so now I can figure out the volume. The volume is 8 feet. And so if I take um, area times length 8 feet, I get the volume of the trough. So let's see. Let me erase this. Hope you got that okay. So volume of the trough, that is x inch, x feet high, let's go with feet, is going to be um, 8 feet times x squared, square feet, over the square root of 3. So that's uh, 8 x squared over the square root of 3 uh, cubic feet. Cubic feet. There we go. Got that? Well, that was a lot of work to get to that point, but I think, I think the rest of the problem will go pretty smoothly because I have the the formula for the shape of my trough in terms of x, x is the depth and how deep the water is. And I want to know how fast is it rising when x is 9 inches. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to time, d dt, and I get, uh, I'll write over here v prime. Okay, derivative volume with respect to time, I just call it v prime equals 2. This derivative is going to be 2x times 8 over the square root of 3. So I have uh, 16x over the square root of 3 um, times x prime. Because, again, t, x, different variables. So implicit derivative means I have to multiply by x prime. And uh, so that's the rate of change in volume. Now I'm taking volume, which is cubic feet, and divided by uh, minutes, minutes, so this is uh, cubic feet per minute, okay, cubic feet per minute. All right, well, guess what, the, the water flowing in is flowing in at one cubic feet per minute. See, my units are matching here, so V prime is one cubic feet per minute, x is 9 inches, and let's go with feet, I'm still in feet, 
So nine inches is three fourths, three fourths of a foot, three fourths foot. Okay. So if I plug all that in, I can figure out what uh, figure out what x is. Okay. Um, Okie dokie. Now, if you're wondering about units, the, we had an extra, see I got feet times feet per minute, but, but the eight, we multiplied by eight feet, that, that included another foot unit in there, so really it is a cubic feet over there. Alright, so let's plug the numbers in. One equals to sixteen times three-fourths divided by the square root of three, and x prime is uh, x prime. We're solving for x prime. And so, let's see, I'll erase this over here. I think we're almost done. This is a, it's a very nice problem. The struggle is figuring out the volume of that trough at <laughs> one-six inches deep. All right, so um, here I've got four, that's 12, 12 over the square root of three. So x prime, 12 over the square root of three multiplied by the square root of three divided by 12 is the uh, square root of 3 over 12. All right, so the, uh, the water is rising. Um, now this is in, remember this is in feet per minute. And uh, do we want to answer in feet per minute or, or inches per minute? I didn't specify here, did I? Um, let's go with inches per minute. And so if I multiply by, um, let me see, 12 inches is one foot to convert to units. Feet cancels, and look at that, the 12 cancels. All right, so square root of three inches per minute. The water is rising. Water is rising uh, at a rate. of uh, square root of 3, approximately 1.732 uh, inches per minute. Now let me do a little racing here. By the way, if, you, if you're my student, I'm really going to expect you to write these sentences. Again, I'm going to you know, really emphasize that because um, you need to be communicating. So square root of 3 is approximately 1.732 uh, inches per minute. There we go. <laughs> you know, I, I just made up these numbers and I uh, had no idea it would come out so clean like this. So uh, I think I got lucky. <laughs> Sometimes these answers can get kind of ugly, but this time it worked out uh, just, just beautifully. So, okay, uh, let's do a few more examples. This next problem is a classic textbook type problem. And um, I, I threw a little bit extra into it to make it a little more interesting, I think. Anyway, it reads long. It's not as bad as it looks. So let's read through it together. A dock is 12 feet above the water line. A rope is attached to the bow of the boat. That would be the very front of the boat. Three feet above the water. The rope is also attached to a, a winch, which uh, hauls the rope in at two feet per second. Assume the winch is at the end of the dock, and the rope from the winch to the boat is 100 feet long. After 40 seconds, how fast is the boat moving towards the dock? Okay, well, a uh, you know, rough guesstimate would be it's moving about two feet per, two feet per second, right? Because that's how fast the rope is moving. But the rope is pulling the boat up at a diagonal. However, the boat is moving along the horizontal. So. Anyway, I'm going to give you a minute, uh, or however long you need, pause the video, see if you can draw the picture, and, and even better, try to solve the problem. And then we'll come back and I'll work through the problem with you. I don't think you can underestimate the value of pictures in applications, math applications, or word problems. Uh, okay, so, um, really, the, the, the 40 seconds is going 2 feet per second, and so if you, literally, if you multiply 40 seconds, times two feet per second. Seconds cancel and you get 80 feet. So after 40 seconds, the, the, the rope has pulled in 80 feet 
which means it's now 20 feet from the winch to the bow of the boat. So let's draw our, our um, here's our, our dock and here's the the winch and the water line and the boat and, and I'm, a, I'm a lousy artist I mentioned that before but here's our here's our boat and from the, the bow or from the boat is up here this is three feet above the water line so anyway we have rope coming down to here and um, we're now the boat is actually it's pulled in 100, 100 started with a hundred feet long rope after 40 seconds it's pulled in 80 feet so this distance is 20 feet all right and we've got uh, this is 12 up here this is three down there I can probably barely see my three all right so um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do I'm gonna erase all the words and I'm going to draw the triangle that really applies to our problem so cutting to the chase this is a triangle that applies to our problem the rope is three feet above the water line the dock is 12 feet high that means this vertical distance from the dock down to the boat is nine feet we said there's 20 feet of rope left 20 feet and um, if we need it we can calculate this um, you know this is um, we'll call it X X squared plus 9 squared is 20 squared so X squared would be 400 minus 81 which is what uh, 319 so X would be the square root of 319 feet square root uh, 319 feet and don't get the calculator out for that don't need to do that at least not now okay um, but in order to account for the motion of the boat and the speed in which it's moving and all that stuff um, we need to put in the variables so I'm going to call this um, X Y and Z so you've seen something like this before we know that the Pythagorean theorem tells us that X squared plus Y squared equals to Z squared in this diagram and if I take the derivative with respect to time, I'll get the rate of change with respect to time, or the speed of each part of this. So I'll take the derivative with respect to time, and I'll get 2x, x prime. It's an implicit derivative application, plus 2y, y prime, equals to 2z, z prime. If you divide by 2, then we have the, uh, I call it the, the, the speed version of the Pythagorean theorem, x, x prime plus y, y prime equals to z, z prime. Okay, now then, um, let's see, I guess I can erase my, my wonderful artwork here. And uh, x, we did need to calculate this, x is the square root of 319. X prime, actually that's what we're looking for, right? Because we want to know how fast is the boat moving toward the dock horizontally. So X prime is our unknown value. That's what we're going to solve for. As far as Y, Y is at 9 feet. And Y prime is not changing. In other words, the, that 9 feet never changes, so the rate of change with respect to time is, is 0. This derivative is 0. Y prime is 0. And then, uh, let's see, z, at this moment in time, is 20 feet long. And the speed of the rope is a constant uh, 2 feet per second. So z prime equals to 2. All right, so I can plug all these numbers in. I've got the square root of 319 times x prime plus uh, 9 times 0. So that term is going to disappear equals to 20 times 2 that disappears so x prime would be 40 divided by the square root of 319 so we can answer the question now the boat um, the boat is moving 
at a speed of, and uh, okay, um, Hmm. All right, at a speed of, let's see, it's uh, 40, I, I was thinking something here in my head. 40 divided by square root of 319 would equal to approximately, now let's go ahead and approximate it, uh, 40 divided by pi. It's, it's not a bad idea to see if that number is in the ballpark. It's around 2.24. Let me use a little wavy equal sign. Approximately... 2.24 uh, uh, feet per second. Okay, I, I now realize why I hesitated there. I thought I was supposed to get, be getting a negative number when I calculated this out. And I, I made a little mistake here. It probably wouldn't be all that easy to see uh, unless you have experience with this. The, the winch is pulling the boat, the, uh, the rope end. <laughs> The rope is decreasing in length, and so the rate of change in the length is actually minus two, minus two feet per second. So my z prime technically would have been minus two, minus two there, minus forty there, and so when you calculate x prime because its distance is also shrinking, now I've got a negative. It should be negative. So uh, a little, a little technical error here, which I don't think fortunately didn't matter much. Um, but yes, the, the rope is shrinking, so that derivative should be negative. The distance to the dock is shrinking, that should be negative. However, when we answer the question, let's don't put the negative in there. Let's write in plain English. The boat is moving at a speed of about 2.24 feet per second. So, um, yeah, if you wrote negative 2.24 in there, that would kind of throw some people <laughs> Um, anyway, all right, so I think good answer, and now I fixed it, so, all right, great problem, I like this problem.